Please rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you and for his sake, forgives you all of your sins as the called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority. I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The members of Mount Olive Lutheran Church in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, welcome you on this, the sixth Sunday of Easter. Our order of worship is Divine Service Setting 2, beginning on page 167 in Lutheran Service Book. Listeners with computer access may also watch our services broadcast live at 9.30 a.m. on Sundays on our YouTube channel, which can be accessed from the main page of our website at mtolivemke.org. These services may also be viewed at any time after they are posted. Our opening hymn is hymn number 773, Hear Us, Father, When We Pray. pray to the Lord. Lord For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help save come. 
comfort and defend us, gracious Lord. be with you. Let us pray. O God, the giver of all that is good, by your holy inspiration, grant that we may think those things that are right, and by your merciful guiding, accomplish them. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Old Testament reading for this morning is from the book of Numbers, the 21st chapter. From Mount Hor, they set out by the way to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. And the people became impatient on the way. And the people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we loathe this worthless food. Then the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people so that many people of Israel died. The people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord that he may take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said to Moses, Make a fiery serpent and set it on a pole, and everyone who is bitten, when he sees it, shall live. So Moses made a bronze serpent and set it on a pole. And if a serpent bit anyone, he would look at the bronze serpent and live. This is the word of the Lord.
epistle text is from St. Paul's first letter to Timothy, the second chapter. This will also serve as the primary basis for our meditation this morning. First of all, then, I urge that supplications, prayers, and intercessions and thanksgivings be made for all people, for kings and all who are in high positions, that we may lead a peaceful and quiet life, godly and dignified in every way. This is good, and it is pleasing in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all people to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. There is one God, and there is one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all, which is the testimony given at the proper time. This is the word of the Lord. Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 16th chapter. Jesus said, In that day you will ask nothing of me. Truly, truly, I say to you, whatever you ask of the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Until now you have asked nothing in my name. Ask, and you will receive, that your joy may be full. I have said these things to you in figures of speech. The hour is coming when I will no longer speak to you in figures of speech, but will tell you plainly about the Father. In that day you will ask in my name, and I do not say that I will ask the Father on your behalf, for the Father himself loves you, because you have loved me and have believed that I came from God. I came from the Father and have come into the world, and now I am leaving the world and going to the Father. His disciples said, Ah, now you are speaking plainly and not using figurative speech. Now we know that you know all things and do not need anyone to question you. This is why we believe that you came from God. Jesus answered them, Do you now believe? Behold, the hour is coming. Indeed, it has come, when you will be scattered, each to his own home, and will leave me alone. Yet I am not alone, for the Father is with me. I have said these things to you, that in me you have, may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation. But take heart, I have overcome the world. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise 
Our next hymn is hymn number 766, Our Father, Whom from Heaven Above. The choir will sing stanzas, verse, stanzas 3 and 5. Thank <laughs> you. 
grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Dear people of God, do you want to live a peaceful life? Would you prefer to lead a life that is undisturbed by all the craziness that has been going on in our world here lately? Do you want to live a life that is God-pleasing in which decency and dignity are highly valued? God's holy word tells us the first step that we must take so that kind of life can be a reality. First of all, I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings be made on behalf of all people, including kings and presidents, on behalf of all who are in positions of authority, so that we may lead a peaceful and undisturbed life, godly and dignified in every way. Oh, how many of us long for a culture in which we can live peaceful and undisturbed lives that are God-pleasing and filled with dignity. Yet our longings for such a life and culture are not fulfilled. They're not fulfilled because of our lack of faith, our, our lack of trust in the Lord. In fact, our failure to regularly and spontaneously pray really shows our lack of trust in God. It is an indication of our lack of faith, our, our failure to rely fully on God instead of relying on ourselves, which is idolatry. Notice that in our epistle text today, our ability to live peaceful, uninterrupted, godly, and dignified lives is made contingent upon our intercessory prayers for other people. Unfortunately, we are so selfish our selfishness even invades our prayers when we fail to pray for other people. We should especially pray for those whom we disagree with. We should especially pray for those who act as our enemies and persecute us. Paul makes it clear that our prayers for other people will affect our own lives. We live in community. That's the way God designed us, creatures who are intended to live in a community. It's not good for man to be alone. God does not expect us to shut ourselves off from the world, but rather that we pray for the world and influence the world. So our first priority, according to God's word in 1 Timothy chapter 2, is to be praying for other people. We often lack peace godliness and dignity in our culture today because we have not prayed and then followed up those prayers, of course, with a testimony about Christ, which is by far the best way to positively influence our culture. How often we whine or complain about people or the things that they do instead of praying for them. Like the ancient people in times of Moses, we grumble against those who are in authority instead of praying for them and our grumbling is really against God who put those people in their positions of authority. We grumble instead of praying, and so we are snake bit by sin. But just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so also the Son of Man was lifted up, that whoever believes in him would have eternal life. Moses prayed for the people who had sinned against God, and the Lord provided healing. Jesus is the one mediator today who prays for us who have sinned against God in our grumbling and our lack of faith, and we too are healed. But we have fallen short in our prayers and our faith. Jesus prevailed. He prayed. He, he prayed often. He got up early and prayed before anyone else would even awake. He prayed with such earnestness in the Garden of Gethsemane that he sweated drops of blood as he was earnestly praying. When things got tough, he prayed. When he experienced anguish and pain hanging there on the cross, he prayed, and not just for himself, he prayed for others. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. In his humanity, he completely relied on his heavenly Father, and that reliance was made manifest in his prayers. He lived a perfect life on our behalf, and then he laid down that perfect life of faith as a ransom for us all. In him, all the fullness of God dwells. So he himself is also the one who answers our prayers. For there is one God, and there is one mediator between God and men, 
the man, Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for us all. It is clear from our second reading today that our God and Savior desires all people to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. So first we are told to pray for all people, and then we are reminded of what Jesus did for all people. And in conclusion, we are told to give a testimony about what Jesus did for all the people at the proper time. So first comes prayer, then the witnessing, so that they may be saved. For he desires all people to be saved, which in the end will enable us all to lead peaceful lives. Think about it. If the Lord is reigning in everybody's heart, if everyone is submitting to the reign of Christ, then we will truly have peace. It is interesting that in our epistle text today, on one hand, we are told to intercede or offer intercessory prayers on behalf of other people. And yet, on the other hand, we are told shortly after that there is one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. To offer or intercede, to intercede or offer intercessory prayers is to mediate, to speak on behalf of the person to the Lord. So as the body of Christ, which you are, as the body of the one mediator, we are to pray for all because Jesus, the one mediator, gave himself for us all. The redeeming act of Christ when he gave himself for all people and the interceding for those who are still caught up in error and the proclamation of what Jesus did for all people are all part of the saving work of God. They're all part of what God brings about himself. He alone is the mediator, and yet, because we have been joined to Christ in holy baptism, made to be a member of his body, the church, we do take part in the intercession for all people, but it is only through Christ that this intercession is heard. Jesus said, truly, truly, I say to you, Whatever you ask of the Father in my name, he will give to you. Because you have been baptized into that name, given the name of Christian, covered with Christ himself in your baptism, and mysteriously made to be a part of God's heavenly household, your prayers are heard. By virtue of your baptism, we, we pray in Jesus' name, praying in accord with who Jesus is and his will for us, according to his identity, as the one mediator between God and men, and our prayers are heard. People are saved. Their, their hearts are open to pay attention to the gospel by the Lord, and they are saved. It is all God's doing, but he uses us as his tools for his work. By ourselves, we are as useless as a hammer without a carpenter. But in the hands of a Savior, he builds the church. To God alone be all the glory. If it were up to us, we would fail miserably and we would never be able to lead peaceful lives. But we have a Savior who desires everyone to be forgiven and saved. We have peace by the blood of his cross. We do. So we pray. We trust in his saving work. We trust in his ability to turn things around just like he turns us around. He forgives us and leads us in the right direction. So we flee from sin and pursue his righteousness, not only in our lives, but in the lives of all. And it is all his doing. As part of the body of Christ, we do take part in the saving work, but Christ gets all the credit. For apart from him, as he tells us, we could do nothing. For it is God who works in us to will and work according to his good pleasure. Christ our head moves us members of his body, according to his good will. He moves our minds, our lips, our hearts to pray for others, and God hears our prayers, and they are saved. And yet it is not our work, but the work of Christ who lives within us. But what a wonderfully important and fulfilling thing to do, to be used by our Savior to save people. As the Apostle Paul has written, I have become all things to all people that by all means I might save some. I do it for the sake of the gospel that I may share with them in its blessings. Christ died for all people. He died for you. 
He died for me. He died for all people, even those who deny the truth and persecute the church. So our first priority is to pray for all people, and then we share the gospel to all people. This is the saving work of Christ the mediator that continues on until he returns to take us to that perfect, peaceful life up above. Christ has already given himself as a ransom for us all. We already have his forgiveness. We already have been made heirs of eternal life. And yet Christ continues to pray. He prays for us. He intercedes for us and the whole world. He desires that we live peaceful lives and that we all be saved. So the saving work of Christ continues among us through the body of Christ. This is good and it is pleasing in the sight of God our Savior who desires all people to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. For There is one God and there is one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus who gave himself as a ransom for us all which is the testimony given at this proper time. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus and to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord God, Heavenly Father, your Son has promised that if we ask in his name, it shall be given to us. For the Father, you love us. Keep us mindful of these words so that we know our prayers are heard and have confidence that you will always freely give your children what is best for us. Lord, in your mercy. Eternal Lord, Receive our supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings for all civil authorities and servants in high positions. Give them the saving knowledge of Christ Jesus, our mediator, whose death is the ransom for all. Bless also their exercise of power for the common good that we may lead peaceful and quiet lives, godly and dignified in every way. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, help your church on earth shine the glorious light of the gospel into all darkened hearts across the world. Bless the work of missionaries and pastors everywhere that your people may serve as a salt that you have called us to be. We ask for your particular blessing upon the work of Kim Boltman and her work in Germany, Reverend Jonah Barakowski and his work in Latin America, America, and Dr. Charles Courtright and his work in Eurasia. Lord, in your mercy. Please have mercy on those who are ill or in need of healing, especially Julia and her family, Leah, Dorothy, Amy, Daryl, John, Kathy, John, Gabrielle and her family, Brian, Elroy, Patricia, Kathy, Marjorie, Vivian, Robert, Janelda, Bruce, Peter, Dick, Jerry, John, Marge, Jim, Alice, Dave, Tom, and Jim. Bless them, Lord, with strength and faith in their times of need. 
And please bless the work of medical professionals that they may serve as your instruments of healing and restoration. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for all who are homebound, especially Arlene, Miles, Anita, Janet, Laura, and Karen. Give them comfort in the knowledge that they are not alone, that you truly are with them to the end of the age. Lord, in your mercy. We ask you to bless and keep those serving in the military, both here and abroad, especially Joshua, Lance, Gabriel, Adam, Brandon, Jordan, Catherine, and Matthew. We ask for your continued blessing on all emergency personnel that you would keep them safe and also bless their work so that they may live in peace and quietness. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Dear Lord, look with compassion upon those who are suffering from hunger, homelessness, poverty, discrimination, reduced employment, or unemployment. Have mercy and take away their sufferings. Move us all to be your instruments of mercy and grace to those around us. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, bless our school and our efforts to prepare a new generation in the faith to serve you. All these things and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again and now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the offering.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God. And most especially, we are bound to praise you on this day for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, the very Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and bore the sins of the world. By his dying, he has destroyed death. By his rising again, he has restored to us everlasting life. Therefore, with Mary Magdalene, Peter, and John, and with all the witnesses of the resurrection, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth. You have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Amen. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and to drink, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Our communion hymns are hymn number 618, I Come, O Savior, to Thy Table, and hymn number 777, Grant Peace, We Pray, in Mercy, Lord.
Let us pray. O God the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. We ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Our final hymn will be hymn number 771, Be Still My Stole Before the Lord. <laughs> 